guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome if you're new. For those of you that are new, my name is Anna and this is At Home with Anna. We are back out in the backyard today and I've got some beautiful plants that we're going to get into the ground. I've got a lot of work to do before we can do that. I've got to rake out the remainder of the bark in my, what we're going to call the magnolia garden. So I have to rake that out and I have got to get some weeds out and before we can start placing plants. But I wanted to show you guys what I got to plant today. It is a very cool day today. We had storms the last two days and today I think our high is 51. So I am kind of double layered. I have a feeling I'm gonna get hot and this is gonna have to come off, but um, I'm cold right now. So, um, but I got a visor to protect me from that sun that burns your face. You know, that overcast sun that burns your face, yeah. Um, try and remember to put this on. I don't always remember though, but anyways, let me show you what we got and what we're going to be planting today. Okay, I got myself another butterfly bush. This one is the um, butterfly candy little grape. And it is full sun, um, rebloom spring to summer, hardy in zones five through 10. Mature size two to three feet high, two to three feet wide. Anyways, I have one of these already in my garden and it is struggling. I was, it was coming back. I'll show it to you guys in just a minute. Um, it's coming back, but it's taking forever to do what everything else is doing in the garden. So um, I was a little concerned about it. And, and I, I do realize that we are still very early in the spring. It is, you know, the first week of April. We still have some time for that. But um, with the amount of sun and water and warmth and everything that this plant is getting, I just feel like it should be caught up with the rest. So um, we had a rare, I told you guys, a rare 26 degree night a couple weeks ago. And so all the little new baby growth, because I didn't protect it, um, was killed. Um, but everything underneath is still alive. So I was talking to the girl at the nursery yesterday, or at Lowe's, and the cashier, and she said she never buys plants full price. She always gets them off the clearance aisle. And she said she uses this for any plants that look, um, you know, weary or look like they're struggling a little bit. So she suggested that I try this on the plant and see if that helps any. So we're going to be taking care of that today. After I get the bed all cleaned out of the bark and get it all weeded, we will look at that plant cut off anything that doesn't look like it's gonna thrive and when I'm all done planting this is safe for everything we're gonna go ahead and um, apply some of this fertilizer it is um, for indoor plants for the garden seeds and bulbs um, trees uh, all of course all your outdoor plants your seedlings lawns um, bare root and root balls it's for everything and she said she's bought plants off the clearance rack that just looked no bueno, and she's used this, and after the you know second or third dose, they're thriving and looking great. So we're gonna give it a shot. So I'm, I'm not sure where I'm placing everything that I got today because I am going to put a picture up here, right here, and this is my ultimate garden that I would love to see come back every year. Um, and so that is what I'm going to be working on <laughs> this year. Um, and we started off with my maple tree gardens, and then we moved over to the hydrangea beds, and now we're moving into the magnolia garden. Um, and eventually we'll make it over to the crepe myrtle garden. But right now we're working on the magnolia garden. So um, I got to get that all cleaned out. But I'm kind of pushing my way that way, um, because I want to fill it up as I go. You know what I mean? Um, not that I'm gonna, everything that I got today is gonna go in one space, but I really want to concentrate on filling the garden up. So I've decided I wanna get some roses and I'm just ecstatic about this year's gardening session. So um, anyways, so 
I got that butterfly bush and I was watching um, a garden show yesterday and <laughs> after I was done watching it I ran out and I grabbed two of the proven winners rock and round pop star these are full sun zones three to nine look at the picture on those and I just thought if I had a couple of mounds of these in the garden, I would be so happy. So I picked up two of these. Anyways, I love the interest that this gives, a little florets, even without blooms. It's beautiful. Got myself some more columbine. You guys are so awesome for letting me know that this is something that comes back year after year. So I'm super excited to get these put in the garden. I've picked up three of them. And these are Spring Magic. So I'm in love with these. They're just beautiful. So I got three of those. All right, the next one I got, and I think I picked up two of these, are lamb's ear. This is the big ear. And these are, these got two and a half, two to two and a half feet tall, and one to three feet wide in the garden. So a beautiful forefront plant to have in the forefront of your garden which we will be picking a spot for them. There's no tags on here because I got it at the garden center. Um, their hardiness is zone seven through 10 and they're full sun. So I told you I'm trying to find things for my garden that are full sun that are gonna thrive in the sun because that is the struggle that I had last year was I was just buying what I wanted, wasn't paying a huge amount of t attention to the sun. And although in the late afternoon, this backyard is shaded um, by the houses over here, but that's not enough shade to keep things happy um, because they're in full sun. It's eight, just nine o'clock, 8.56. I'm gonna show you um, what the garden looks like. And this is what it'll look like all day until that sun moves behind those houses. So um, you'll see what I'm talking about. But let's walk the garden and um, before we get busy because I'm excited. Okay, first off, here are the trees we planted out. And it looks like the bunnies have had a little meal with a couple of the pansies, little turkeys. Um, but they look really good. The sun patience, this side is, there's a bunch of blooms getting ready to explode or buds, I should say. Look at the hydrangea, you guys. Are you kidding me? Like in two days, they sprouted like this. It's amazing. This side, however, so many blooms already on the sun patients. They look so beautiful, so good. So this is the area that we are going to start working in. This is what we're gonna be calling the Magnolia Garden, going that way to there. And then that one over there is the crepe myrtle garden, which we will be dealing with later. But I got my hands full <laughs> with this one here. Um, this is the little pugster that I was telling you guys about. And there are definitely some, you know, I could take off some of this growth here. It's dead for sure. Um, and I want to give it a dose of that and see what we're dealing with. But I just think, you know, it's going to be okay, I think. I'm hoping. Oh, I could go back and look and find out what this is. I can't remember. But either way, um, it's doing really good. And it looked much like that one after we had that weird 26 degree day. So anyways, you can see we've got lots of weeding to do. Um, these are the cone flowers or corn flowers I planted in fall and they're coming back and who am I to tell them that they can't? So I'm just gonna leave them because I think the more the merrier. We'll just have a little family reunion of plants. So got all this bark to take out. I got my bags ready and this is the crepe myrtle, which I didn't see, I don't see, I didn't see any budding on this tree at all. I'm a little concerned. However, I do now. I didn't the other day, but I do now. So I see it, look at you guys. Do you see that? Let me see. I see budding. Do you see that? Okay. We are in good shape. Yes. Okay. All right. So we'll take care of this one. This one has landscape fabric I got to tear out. And then these are our hedges that took a real hit this past winter, but they are all leaping out again. 
coming back to life. After I get all this bark and stuff out and put out down some good soil and fertilizer, they're just gonna take off, so. Anyways, we'll deal with that another day. We've got to deal with this whole area today, so let's get Really busy. quick, I forgot to show you. I got seed them, three of them, so we're gonna be placing those two. <laughs> So I got all of the, well, as much as I could have the bark out of here. And somebody had asked me a question, sorry for the dogs. That is just something we have to deal with living here. <laughs> they bark at everything. If a paper goes by, they bark at it. So um, anyways, um, somebody had asked what is the difference or why am I removing the bark and putting in mulch? And the reason for that is because um, the mulch has more of an organic matter, which I'm trying to get as much organic matter into these gardens as possible because of the clay. And I know that everybody has offered me so many different tips and tricks on that, but um, which I will use some of those. But for right now, I'm just trying to use what I have and I have organic matter and that's what I'm gonna be using. But I wanted to get as much, I didn't do like back there because I don't think we're planting anything back there. So I'm gonna leave that. Um, I know that we're gonna be moving the planter here. Um, Ernie wants to get a cone, like holly tree to go right here. Um, I think that's what he said. But anyways, so now I've got to get all these weeds out and then um, we're gonna trim this little pugster here. And then we're gonna to get to place in all of the plants.
Okay, it looks better already. I got all the weeds out. Well, all of them I can see. I'm sure some will pop up on camera that I missed. After a while, they all start to look the same. But now we've got a fresh start. And I'm going to start placing, um, sorry for the wind, guys. It is, it's windy, so that's why I'm trying to do um, little snippets of me talking. Ooh, trying to block the microphone from the wind. But when I was talking about working my way this way, I didn't mean I was going to plant everything right here. I just mean I want to, before I get over to that side, I want to make sure this garden is as full as I want it to get. So, um, really quick, this is a phlox that came back. There were two more, but the bunnies ate them down to the nubs. <laughs> um, I don't know why they left this one alone. One will never know the um, science behind rabbits, <laughs> why they eat one thing and not the other. But, um, I was going to move. I'm not sure. I may move it. Um, we shall see. It just depends on where I place everything. So let's go ahead and get everything placed and then we'll come back and talk about my reasoning behind why I placed them where I placed them. and I got two grasses. They were sitting on my patio, so I forgot to share them with you guys. But uh, I finally found some at the nursery that we went to. Um, she didn't know what the name of it is. She just said it was a perennial grass. So I grabbed a couple. I think I want to place them back behind the hollies over here. Just to add some whimsical, I love how they blow in the wind. Isn't that pretty? I have the columbine back there just because there's a little bit of shade that happens and like I said Ernie wants to plant a tree right here so they'll get some shade if needed. My hellebore needs a little bit more shade. This tree is taking forever <laughs> to leaf out. Eventually this will be a shade garden eventually but right now it's not. I went ahead and planted or I went ahead and placed the lambs ear here. The reason why I'm leaving the front of the bed empty is because I'm going to be planting annuals in here probably more some patients and um, just lining the whole garden with them so I'm concentrating from let's see right there back now this is why now I remember why I needed to move the flocks because I wanted to plant these two grasses here now where am I gonna move the flocks I might put her right here because I plan on getting more so I'll put her in a position where I can plant a couple more behind her. Here's a butterfly bush. This will be a butterfly bush. Um, so we'll have some high, low interest, you know, throughout the garden. This will stay low. This will stay lowish. These will get big. This, these will get big, but we can keep those trained. So that's lovely. Um, and I love the fact that I'm gonna be able to separate those if I need to. These guys get three feet, they're dwarfs. So, um, so that's nice. And I haven't gotten anything for over here yet, but that's okay. The garden is going to, um, you know, develop as we move along. <laughs> so I'm trying not to breathe hard. I'm just out of shape. And somebody had mentioned they were worried about me. Don't worry about me, I'm just out of shape. So when I do a lot of digging, bending, <laughs> all of that stuff, <sighs> I get out of breath. I'm going to be using oh, what I have left of my plant town today. So we'll be putting that. And I have three bags of some organic garden soil that I'll be using as well. So let's go ahead and put these guys to bed.
Okay, you guys, look at it. Does not look good so far. Everything has been raked. I, I When I um, plant, I always add the organic uh, matter to it, but <clears throat> any soil that is natural that's in the garden, if it crumbles well, I use that as well. But I always take out all of the clay as much as I can when planting. And those bags are heavy. <laughs> Got them all taken to the curb. I'm gonna take you guys out front and show you the gardens we just planted to show you how they fared the storms yesterday and the day before. But everything looks really good. Now we just have to water everything in and get it fertilized. Um, but I, I'm really loving I, the dots of the sage green up against the other vibrant green colors. I think that they're gonna make a, a nice show up against the different greens and remember we're still planting annuals all around here and we're going to do the cheat garden method around here so it won't be so cumbersome i might take them in i just, i want to get some super tunias and dot the garden they are not out yet or they haven't been out yet so i do want to dot the garden with some super tunia vista bubble gum i love that color so um and i want to get a rose i'm not sure where <laughs> where i'll be able to sneak a rose in here I do want to get a rose bush. Maybe maybe over here in this area I'll be able to put a rose bush. I don't know. We'll see. But anyways, so far so good. Let me take you out front and show you how those gardens did. Quick pit stop here. I did move um, this daylily from over here to here and I was worried it wasn't going to bloom and it's the first one putting out a bloom. <laughs> Now this all is filled in, except for this one here. And I'm sorry, I talk with my hands. Somebody had mentioned that they get dizzy when my hand does that and my camera auto focuses. So I apologize for that. I'll try to do better. <laughs> um, but anyways, now this, as soon as this one right there fills in, it'll be a nice daylily garden. These did really well. We got some torrential rain and I was, And I was fully expecting these to wash out. Nothing, not a darn thing. They stayed put, which means we did good. They look really good. We got some blooms already. We have some blooms coming in over here already. This is all we got as far as runoff. <laughs> I'll take it, I will take it. It looks so good still. So we did get a little bit of the cardboard show in there. Not a big deal. A little bit over there too. That will decompose, so I'm not concerned about that. But I love the fact that we're already getting blooms. Most of them didn't have any blooms when I planted them. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and fertilize with the Super Thrive. I've got two gallons of water here and it calls for a quarter teaspoon per, there we go. So I'm just going to keep mixing up batches and take it around and pour it on all the plants. Have so much more gardening to do and i cannot wait to share it all with you guys i want to thank you guys so much for staying until the end i appreciate you guys more than you'll ever know please leave me a comment down below and let me know how you like today's video and of course always your advice helps with everything and a thumbs up really helps youtube know that you're liking my video and they will push it out to other people who enjoy this type of content i appreciate you guys so much for staying until the end and we will see you guys in the next video Bye bye